Hey everybody, this is Mr. Gonzalez with our next Living Environment Regents exam review. This is episode three where we'll be looking at graphing. Now you might think graphing is super easy and it's not a problem, but we do see a lot of mistakes on the Regents, so let's go through the kinds of graphs you'll see. Okay, the first thing that you get on the Regents, if you do get a graph to do, is you get a data table and you get a grid that looks like this. Now, you get about three or four points per graph, what you need to do, the first thing you need to do is make what's called an appropriate scale. Now, a lot of people mess up on this, so let me show you the most common mistake first. For example, the bottom says water temperature. What we see is people start with zero, which is cool, and then they copy the numbers that are on the data table exactly as they see them. This is probably one of the most common mistakes we see. This is not correct because it's not an appropriate scale. That means the numbers don't go up by a certain amount. See the first number is 1, and then it skips to 10? That's no good. So we're going to get rid of that, okay? What you want to do instead is have the lines go up by a certain amount. So I'll start with 0 again, but if you notice on the data table, the biggest number is 30. So what we want to do is just make it go up to 30, like this. 10, 20, 30, okay? You count up the lines, and if you notice, each line goes up by 2. So that works. That's a, cor a correct scale. Now, if you look at the side, the numbers go from s on the data table that go up to 14. So that means that you want 14 to fit on the side. So again, you can start with 0 at the bottom, which most people do, and then something like this, 5, 10, 15. If you find that you're drawing lines, like extra lines, you're doing something wrong. The regents will always give you enough lines to do an appropriate scale. Okay, what if you get something like this? You see the little uh, years on the left and like crazy hundreds on the right? What do you do then? Do you start from zero? Well, to make an appropriate graph, this is actually from the answer key on the regions, you don't always have to start from zero. Most people think that zero is always the bottom. But on this one, you notice 1960 is the first line, and also 300 is on the left side there. So you don't always have to start from zero. Now, sometimes you get a weird thing like this on the data table that you need to make um, where you have to make two lines. Let me show you what that looks like. That would look like this. Now, again, notice that one line at the bottom, start time, starts from zero, but the left side, length of root tips, doesn't start from zero. So you could do that as well. Now, if you do two lines, um, one will usually be marked with something like a circle, and the other one will be marked by a triangle. That way your grader can find the actual points that you plot. Excellent. Now the other type of graph you'll see on the regions is um, relationships between two things. What do I mean that by that? For example, Quapa! what's the relationship between temperature and amount of sweat? Well, you know the, the, the relationship between those. The hotter it gets, the more you sweat. So the way we write it is by a very famous region sentence. As blank increases, the second blanks will, and then you say increase, decrease, or stay the same. So which word do you put first? Well, whatever makes sense. So for example, if I put sweat first, that won't make sense. As sweat increases, temperature will? Not really. So we put temperature first and we put sweat second. As temperature increases, sweat will, ba bing ew, increase. You got it? Now, there's a way you can graph that relationship. It looks like this. Temperature on the bottom, sweat on the side, and an uphill line. Now, how do you know what word goes on the bottom? Well, in the sentence, the first word that you say gets written on the bottom of a relationship graph. So temperature on the bottom, sweat on the side. Now. What if you don't know the relationship between two things? Like, for example, this one is water temperature and level of dissolved oxygen. Ugh, that's a real regions question. Here's what they ask you. State the, the relationship between the level of dissolved oxygen and water temperature. I don't know what accent that was. Anyway, um, all you have to do is use the first, the bottom water temperature first and write as water temperature increases, the level of dissolved oxygen decreases. You always write the bottom one first. So the bottom thing on the graph was water temperature. I said that first, okay? Since the graph is a downhill graph, it decreases. Now, 
this is where it's a little tricky. If you notice, the word on the bottom of the graph says time in minutes. It's not as time increases, total number of bubbles released increases. No, the relationship they're asking for is between temperature. So where's temperature on the graph? Well, if you notice in the upper right, there is a big wabah, a thing that says the lines are two different temperatures. So you would say as water temperature increases, the rate of gas production increases, okay? So be careful. Sometimes the lines are labeled, not the bottom of the graph. Now, dependent versus independent variables. Basically, there's two kinds of variables on graphs, dependent and independent. Um, so you get multiple choice. Like, for example, this one's the dependent variable is which one? Well, if you want to get tr uh, technical, the dependent one is the one that depends on the other. For example, sweat depends on the temperature, so that's the dependent variable. But a good way I always remember is the independent variable is always in the bottom. So in this graph, temperature is on in the bottom, so it's the independent variable. Okay? Hope you enjoyed that little graphing session and don't get anything wrong on the graph. See ya!